Reader matches the flowers. <laughs> it's so pretty. Well, uh, tried very desperately to wrap up our media availabilities here this afternoon with um, Boris Said, who will drive the number 30 Great Cliff Chevrolet, and his teammate Reed Sorensen, the driver of the number 32 Dollar General Chevrolet, both with Turner Motorsports. Boris is the defending winner of this race, won it here uh, last year in um, record-setting fashion with the closest margin of victory ever in a road course uh, in the Nationwide Series. Uh, Reed's second in our point standings. He's 10 points behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and does have one victory this year. Uh, that was at a road course at Road America. Boris will go out in the uh, first group, fourth fastest in that first practice. And Reed's going to go out in group six. We were talking with Elliot and Ricky that uh, you're out in the same group with those guys, the three of you closest together in the points. Uh, Boris, we'll start with you as defending um, winner and in some good equipment and nothing much has been going on for you this week, huh? Kind of a boring week? No, not really. Greg Pip was not here, is he? No, um, I mean, uh, I, I just feel really happy. I didn't have a ride two weeks ago and, uh, you know, this ride came up and, and, you know, Turner Motorsports is a great team. I mean, they're the front running non, uh, I guess, uh, sprint cup team that's running the Nationwide Series. So, you know, I jumped at the chance got three good teammates we can bounce ideas off each other and uh, you know I think the great clips car the Chevrolet was really good practice you know I think I, I still make I made the prediction last year the fastest car will win this race and uh, you know th this track is so tough on cars and drivers and and there are double file restarts and I think that you got to be really smart and uh, almost run this race like a 12 hour or 24 hour race and make sure that you know, you have your equipment right for the end of the race when you really need it. So I, I think uh, we had a good practice, the car had a really good balance, and, and I'm, uh, I feel pretty comfortable. Reed, first time at this track, and you're ticking some points off there off Sorensen or uh, Stenhouse's lead, so how important is this for you to uh, maybe see if you can keep that going? Yeah, it's uh, so far it's been, it's been good, having a good time. Uh, got Boris to take me out in the uh, pace car this morning and try to help me out some, so I've been bugging him as much as I possibly could to, to get some help there and uh, still learning so didn't get to do a qualifying run so my qualifying run uh, you know I'll, I'll be learning as that goes on um, might run two or three laps probably more than we want to to save gas but uh, probably need to just to run a good lap and I'm excited about the race uh, I've watched the, the races here in the past and you can tell that it's uh, it's definitely hard to, to keep your equipment under you for the long run and uh, you know, guys get anxious really easy, it looks like. So, looking forward to it tomorrow and uh, try to be smart, stay out of trouble, and, you know, hopefully uh, gain some points and uh, get closer to the lead. All right. Questions for uh, Boris Suri? Let us know. Bring you the mic. Name and affiliation, please. Dave Stubbs in the Montreal Gazette. Um, Boris, I've got two for you, and I'll hold on to the microphone because I want to split them. So, um, would I be safe in assuming that you achieved more fame from the past week than you did for winning your first nationwide series race in Montreal last year? Yes. I mean, my last year when I won the nationwide race, I never had that many phone messages and texts in my life. But you, asked, you asked for the text, though. Yeah. You said text me the address. Oh, no. Well, no, now I'm going to go. No. When I, when I left Watkins Glen, that was at my, after Montreal last year. Uh, after Watkins Glen, my phone blew up. I mean, I, and within a half hour, I had his address 40 times. And uh, I, I, for the life of me, I don't understand it. You know, I mean, I think the biggest story was Brad Keselowski almost winning with a broken leg and, you know, Marcus Ambrose, you know, winning his first race. And I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't plan for it to happen. It's just, I'm kind of an old school guy. You know, I don't tweet, I don't Facebook, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't even know how to do it. And, you know, he made me mad during the race because he was a jackass and instead of wrecking his car because I have a lot of respect for Jack Roush, I didn't do it. You know, I, I told him over the radio that well, I'm going to meet you at your trailer and I'm going to give you the first shot and we're going to settle it. And that, that's just the way I am. And if we would have both socked each other in the eye, I would have been fine with it and walked out and done. But I guess in this day and age with TV cameras, it's just... Uh, and then when someone puts a camera in front of me, I'm just honest. I say what's on my mind, and you know, after a race, you're all amped up and a lot of adrenaline, and you know, I said all that stuff. So I don't regret it. That's just me. And uh, but yeah, it was crazy this week. 
What was your feeling when you look at the video of that and you say, your Bond Sports Center is probably on right now, it's running, it's in a loop, it's running around the clock. Uh, what's your feeling when you see that? I don't really like looking at it, to be honest with you. I mean, because normally 90%, 99% of the time, I'm pretty happy, I have a good time. I mean, I love racing. I feel privileged to be able to race in NASCAR if it's only one or two times a year. But I get mad when those guys tell me that because you're a part-time guy, you know, you, you know, Greg Biffle was mad at me a year ago at Watkins Glen for racing him too hard. He came up to me after and was yelling at me like, you know, every restart, you were three wide, you know, why are you racing that hard? You're not a full-time guy. And it's just bullshit. I mean, he's just an idiot. You know, I, I, I told him that, you know, James Finch, who I was racing for, has been sending his entry blanks into NASCAR way before you ever came on the scene. And it's a full-time team trying to stay in the top 35 in points. So, granted, I'm not racing for driver's points, but that guy that hires me expects me to give him 100%. And I'm not going to give him any less. That's the way I am. And I, my explanation was Michael Waltrip this year is running a few races. And I'm, I'm sure when he gets a sponsor, he doesn't tell the sponsor, oh, by the way, you know, I, I'm, before I take your money, you know, I'm going to have to pull over for all those regular guys. You know, I can't race those guys that hard. I mean, that's just, it's idiotic. It's racing. So I, I, I really took offense to that. I took offense to when he said, I don't respect the sport. I don't really know what that means, but you know, I, I feel privileged I'm in the sport. I take time for any fan that wants to talk to me, unlike a lot of those guys. And uh, I mean, I just, I like competing and I like racing. I mean, everybody can't be Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. I mean, I, I know I'll never be Jimmy Johnson, but it still it doesn't mean you should just quit. You know, it's still, it's still a great sport to be a part of and, and I feel lucky every time I get to do it, so. You know, I, I, I still think Greg Bibble's a jackass, but, you know, we've settled our differences, and I won't be going to Christmas dinner with him, that's for sure, but I don't think I'll be swinging any punches at him either. Sorry, the second part. Jacques Villeneuve is a hometown hero here, and there was some talk that because of his ill-fated pass uh, at Elkhart Lake, where he took out both Brian Scott and Max Pappas, that he might be in the crosshairs of some people here. There are some people who now say that because of what went down at Watkins Glen, you might have taken a little bit of the heat off of him. Any reaction to that? Probably. But, you know, like I watched that at, 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 at Road America, and you're saying, like, yeah, that was a crazy wild pass. But, I mean, it was a green white, it was a green white checker, and he was trying to win the race, and that guy goes for it. I mean, he's from F1, and F1 is, it's your job to pass the guy in front of you, and you drive hard, and, and that's what racing's about. I mean, sometimes you make mistakes, sometimes you don't. I mean, I guess I would look back a week, you know, at Watkins Glen. A.J. Allmendinger is leading the race, and Kurt Busch is a lap down, and he takes the leader out, and nobody said anything. And I thought to myself, if that was me a lap down, and I took Kurt Busch out, I mean, they'd be, you know, stringing me up in the front yard on a cross. So it, it, it really depends. And I think, you know, I don't think Jacques has anything to worry about. And I think the guys who want to take him out will be too far behind him here anyway. I mean, he's pretty fast here. Thanks, Other questions? Over here, please. No, he's got oh, sorry. It. Jim Noble, ESPN. Um, Boris, could you compare the equipment that you won with last year to what you have this year? Is it truly to do that, or can you compare how much of a shot you have again this year in this new Turner Motorsports stuff? Well, I mean, I think Robbie Benton is a good friend of mine, and I think he does more with less than anybody I've ever met in racing. I mean, when you go into his race shop, how neat and how organized it is, and, and, and he runs on fumes as far as dollars. He does a great job. I think for sure this year, I, I mean, I have a better car, um, and uh, there's nothing I'm lacking. I, I got a Hendrick engine with a lot of horsepower and, and three teammates to bounce ideas off. So yeah, I, for sure I have a better, uh, a better car, a faster car this year. I mean, last year we won because we were smarter. You know, we didn't have the fastest car. We were probably a fifth place car. But, you know, all those guys broke their stuff and used up their brakes, and, and we were there to capitalize on it. So, you know, there's been times when I've been the fastest car and I've thrown it in the bushes and I've had blown motors. And, and last year, I think we had a really good plan with what we had, and it worked out. You know, this year, there's some fast guys. I mean, uh, Jacques Villeneuve was really fast. Ron Fellows is really fast. And, you know, then you got Marcus Ambrose that'll be coming on a plane and probably jumping in. So there's going to be some good guys again this year. It's going to be tough. Woody came with MRN, uh, one for both of you. Boris, can you describe uh, saving brakes here and how aware and cognizant of that you have to be and what kinds of things you try to do to make sure those brakes make it to the end compared to other road courses? And for Reed, the the road courses have kind of taken Bristol's reputation away as the, the roughhouse racing. Going there next week is, is 
for the night race. Has Bristol lost that reputation now, or is it still as good as ever? Um, I, I think it's as good as it's you know been since they paved it. Um, I was a big fan before they repaved it. I really enjoyed that place, and uh, it was hard to pass. But it, you know, I thought it was a little bit rough or a little more bumping and grinding. But it's uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think uh, anything's different as far as Bristol goes. I mean, I think you'll see a lot of side by side racing. I mean, ever since they repaved it, if you're on the outside, you can really uh, really keep the guy on the bottom pinched down, and it's really hard to pass. So. I don't think you'll uh, see anything different than normal, and I think it still has that reputation because, you know, every every race there's somebody uh, somebody gets a little anxious and moves people out of the way still, so still has that reputation. Boris on brakes. Oh uh, yeah, I mean this place. Even when the Formula One cars come here, you hear on the broadcast that they have to save their brakes because they run out of them. It's just uh, the chicanes and the turns are so slow. You know, and you're going so fast down the straightaways, I mean, heat is the big issue. It's not so much wearing the pads to the metal, it's just there's a lot of heat. And even in the uh, Grand Am Rolex car, you know, we're having brake problems, you know, after five laps, you know, the brake pedal goes, goes to the floor. So it's really going to be, you know, who can conserve and know when to use them and when not to use them. And it's all about just managing the heat. So those things get hot here. A uh, question for both people from the from uh, newspaper <coughs> press. Um, how do you like that uh, event, and how important it is for the nationwide series to have uh, an event in Montreal or in Canada? I think it's important, and I think what really sold me on this event was the first year we were here. I mean, on Friday it was packed, and then it was raining for qualifying, and NASCAR was about to cancel qualifying. And I, I remember I took Joe Balish out, and I go, you got to look at the stands. I mean, it was packed in the pouring rain. These people were sitting out there waiting. And uh, I mean, it's really, you know, the fans here are so passionate about motorsports, and it's good to see that it's not only Formula One here. They like the stock cars, too. And I think it really helps that, you know, the nationwide can get guys like Shock in the car and, and Alex Tagliani and, and uh, Patrick Carpentier. I mean, it's good because you can put your local heroes in there, and, you know, and race against these guys. So it makes for exciting racing. And it's neat to really see the, the city, or the, you know, get behind these local guys. And last year, even though I won, I felt like, you know, the way the fans were, I mean, they were, they embraced it and they were, you know, as polite as could be. I mean, I almost felt Canadian after I won last year. Yes, I mean, this is my first time here, so I've never been here before until yesterday. So, so far it's been good. I mean, uh, like Boris said, the, the fans are, are very passionate, it seems like, about their racing. And, you know, just today in the garage, you can you can tell that the, the race fans really enjoy us being here. And uh, I'm excited about, you know, seeing what's going on tomorrow and, and getting the race underway. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's very cool to come here. And uh, I was excited, definitely excited uh, this whole week uh, coming in here. So... Hopefully we'll finish it off with a good run. Any other questions? Sports with Gregor C. Question for Boris. Uh, do you think that uh, part-time driver of you as a second-class citizen, since you got comments like uh, before, they said that you drive too hard, and when someone uh, make a mistake like uh, they'll never throw the record, they, they bash on him and. Uh, do you think you are a second-class citizen compared to the drivers that drive for championship? I, mean, I don't feel like I'm a second-class citizen. I feel like the good guys treat me really good, and I, I think it's you know to get respect, you know, you you, you got to earn it. And but you're a little more under the microscope, you know. And, and and when you make a mistake like Jacques made at Road America, you know, people are going to say that. If it was Carl Edwards, would it have been the same outcry? I don't know. Probably not. But but it's uh, it's unfortunate it happened. But yeah, I mean, you need to you need to watch what you do with some of the regulars, and some guys are you know take it the wrong way, like Greg Biffle, and some guys like Jimmy Johnson or Jeff Gordon, they you know they don't treat me any different. Anything else for Boris or Reed? Guys, thanks for your time. Good thanks. luck this weekend. See you. Soon. Thank you.